Hey fam, it's me Aaron for a comic show. This is New Comics Now. It's a big week of comics. I'm really excited for a lot of these things. It's um, a lot of fun stuff. Um, I was at Florida Supercon in Miami, had a great time there. Now I'm back and uh, here's the comics. Justice League 22, it's Trinity War Part 1. It's Jeff Johns and you know this is the stuff that I really dig. When all this stuff starts coming together, all these, you know, the three disseparate Justice League books, you got the uh, Trinity of Sin, you have the uh, free comic book day issue from like two years ago basically that it actually has that double page spread from that free comic book day issue here in in real time. This is, It's happening now. Um, and you have all the, the weird allegiances of the different characters. Uh, we had two deaths, or apparent two deaths in here. Um, one, uh, it seems like the Dan DiDio made good on his promise already from the Retailer Roadshow saying we're going to have a Superman in the books that's more like the Superman we saw in the movie, which uh, I suppose means not caring about bystanders and killing enemies. Um, he and Wonder Woman specifically have that conversation about killing enemies and uh, something happens. It's crazy. It's nuts. And um, you saw something on Bleeding Cool if you clicked on that about um, it seems he, the pronouns he, the one that, that dies, that... Um, Obviously, that Superman, yeah, and uh, yeah, maybe he's just there to die, you know, and, and you know, other people can take that role, but Shazam kicked ass in here. Shazam was a lot of fun, and I love seeing him integrated into the Just League book now that his backups are over, and this was just a really fun book for me. It's a fun part one. I like seeing all the characters I just imagined. It's all like my superpowers figures and just bashing them against each other or whatnot, but it was a fun first issue. It was a fun thing that actually connects all these pieces of the New 52 that, you know, started with issue one with uh, Pandora everywhere. And, and also uh, the outsider guy from uh, Flashpoint. You know, he's, it's, it's cool. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, Just League Dark Volume 2 came out. This is the, um, you can read this without reading Volume 1. This is where Jeff Lemire took over. This is where it really got good. I'm not poo-pooing on um, Milligan's, first volume. I like Milligan a whole lot and a whole lot of Vertigo stuff and I loved him in um, Hellraiser or Hellblazer and I loved him in uh, Ecstatics, uh, the X-Force Ecstatics. But Jeff Lemire came on and he just made Constine shine and he made him the center. He made this trinity of uh, Zatanna, uh, Deadman, and Constine and he really picked up all these elements of the old Vertigo universe and started pulling them more into this dark corner of the DC universe, including the Books of Magic, which is the name of the volume, and Tim Hunter, Neil uh, Gaiman's character that uh, I believe Harry Potter was based on, and uh, really shined with this. And they, they, he took Constantine and just made him work so well for me by putting him in this, this world without magic where all their magical powers were negated and Constantine couldn't tell a lie. So obviously his power is, you know, lying, conjuring the truth. And uh, he couldn't say any lies and it was hilarious. Just confessing how much he wants to be liked and how he doesn't mean the bad things he says to other people. And just a very, very cool story. You have the second part of uh, Green Lantern Corps. This is John Stewart's book. This is where John Stewart is going to finally become a leading man and finally, you know, heal those wounds from his past and, and build, build something. Maybe he'll be the uh, new drill sergeant for the recruits. The recruits are heavily in here. Um, obviously, he's an architect. He could help rebuild the Corps. But um, I'm, I'm really digging it. I'm really digging the, the link between Green Lantern Corps and Green Lantern, uh, especially with the recruits and with rebuilding this Corps. And I just love that it's all building together for a one-month crossover. Lights out in, in um, October when the four books are all going to cross over with an in-cap annual of... Uh, Greenlander Annual number two, and that's going to be a one-month crossover of boom, lights out, the rings are not working anymore. And um, I just love how character-driven this feels. Yes, there's the plot, yes, there's, you know, the core's in disarray and the rings are blinking out and they're this new mysterious villain, but it, I just love Jon Stewart talking to Salak, uh, talking to Kilowog. I, I just love this, this interaction of um, what do we do now after, after the whole their whole world crumbled, their whole kingdom of Oa crumbled. What do they do? How do they rebuild? Um, did Guy really sell them out? It, it was awesome. Um, the two Snyder books, you got uh, Zero Year. No, it's not Year Zero, it's Zero Year. I've gotten that wrong a couple times. This is the second part, number uh, 22, and this is Batman six years ago. Bruce becoming Batman, learning stuff, getting his gadgets together, taking on the Red Hood, uh, you got the Riddler, and I just love these backups so much. These backups, um, this one has uh, 
Raphael Albuquerque, who uh, works with uh, Snyder on American Vampire, and is going to be taking over Jeff Lemire, uh, the art on Jeff Lemire's Animal Man. But I like these backups of Bruce Wayne, this 19-year-old Bruce Wayne. Like, that would be such a great TV show, like Smallville. Uh, last issue, you had him learning how to um, evade cops in a car by having the best, uh, the best thief in the world that, you know, evades police teach him, and then, you know, at the end he turns him into the law. It was pretty awesome. And this he learns how to be an escape artist. I, I just, there's so many things that Bruce Wayne knows and picks up, uh, picked up that he didn't just learn from the League of Assassins, you know? Like, this is really cool. I really dig it. And um, Unchained, this is Jim Lee's art. Um, no one draws the Superman New 52 costume like Jim Lee because he designed it. And I'm really digging this Superman. I love Scott Snyder. You guys know I love Scott Snyder. Snyder does have a kind of a slower start to his runs. He has this slow build and as it goes you start to see the theme, you start to, um, it's, it's like a roller coaster and then when everything, all the pieces are in place it just goes Bruh! like with Night of Owls in uh, his Batman book and that led into Death of the Family and I'm just excited for the long form plans he has on Superman and you know you get Jim Lee art now so even though the, uh, the WTF moments, the, the what I call aw shit moments, might not be here yet. Um, you still got that great Jim Lee art. Moving on to Marvel, my favorite Marvel book you all know is Hawkeye. Volume 2 is out, Little Hits, and just such a great name. Little Hits, little single issue stories or two part stories that are just freaking phenomenal. And um, this actually is, I've been saying it's like an image book that Marvel published. It's a creator owned book with a company character that Marvel happens to publish. You see that with the trade dress, you see that with the, the uh, artists, even the fill-in artists are that same style, that same vibe, this total vision from Fraction. There could never be another writer on this. He wants off, they need to cancel the book. Um, and here's another proof in the pudding in, in format. You have this volume two and issue 12 coming out the same day, image style, how they have the volume come out with the very next issue the same day because their books actually gain in sales on the single issues. People actually jump on because it's buzzworthy and with buzz comes jumping on and what better way to jump on than get volume two and the very next issue, issue 12, together in the same day, done. And uh, this actually collects all the way up through the dog issue that came out just a couple weeks ago. So the dog issue is in here, the issue where it's just the dog and uh, he solves a murder and it's awesome. So if you ever wanted to get into Hawkeye, it's perfect. Now you can be, pretend like you were on the train the whole time. You know, pick up volume one, two, 12, boom, you're done. Now you can uh, be one of us. And uh, Young Avengers, I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but it's kind of like Hawkeye to me in that it has its own tone, its own vibe. It's obviously the writer and artist are a team that work together on other creator owned stuff. And I'm just really loving just the teenage book here, it's just so much different than what we were getting with Teen Titans at DC. It, it has this actual feel, like these are real characters really interacting. And I love that he, he's picked up other just bit characters like Miss America Chavez and Prodigy, the depowered um, mutant, and I'm digging it. And Patriot is in here, we don't know who he is, but he's back, so the people that were complaining about him not being in issue one, he's back by issue seven. I don't know if he's the same guy, I don't know, but he's there. And um, Superior Spider-Man, number 13, it's, uh, it's awesome. This is Superior Spider Month. You see the whole thing of what Ox is doing and uh, a new spider island, perhaps, and minions like Despicable Me. He's gonna have minions and a new costume, and I'm just digging it. Spider Month is awesome. I've read Carnage, I really enjoyed that. And, um, you know, it, I'm waiting for that big, uh, that big exodus of fans that are just so angry about Peter Parker leaving that they're not getting Spider-Man anymore when um, this book continuously sells in the top, top of Marvel's list. It sells out for me, I have to reorder it. It's great and it's only getting better. Uh, moving on to Dark Horse, we have Star Wars. Love this book, love Brian Wood. Uh, you got some Vader in here that was really cool. Vader going against the Emperor's wishes in a way. Uh, maybe foreshadowing him going against the Emperor in uh, Return of the Jedi, spoiler, yeah. Um, and we don't actually get any sister kissing in here, but it gets darn close, and I'm, I'm really ready for some more sister kissing. East of West, number four, I love this book. Uh, you get to see the woman who conquered death, and issue five is the message. That message that they've talked about, the message at the end of the world, that's what issue five is. But I like it, I love this book. Killjoys, Clunan art, 
just kicks so much ass, it's worth the price of admission. And Grant Morrison is in it as a character, not as a writer. Gerard Way writes it. Quantum and Woody, this book is hilarious, it's fun. The goat's on the cover. The goat's not actually in the issue yet, but it's kind of like Luke and uh, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, but not really. They're kind of brothers, adopted, kind of different strokes vibe, kind of like has like a um, 80s action comedy vibe, but it's, it's modern, it's funny, and I'm truly digging it. I'm truly, it's quirky, and I love that Valiant's doing this. I love that they're doing a book that's kind of more of a superhero thing, but a comedy. You guys know I love Justice League International. You know I love the comedy, and uh, you know, it kind of has a Beetle and Booster vibe. Uh, that's cool. Um, and finally, Walking Dead. This book is insane. Um, it teases out this all-out war coming in October. Um, it has a, a, a little ad for it with this patch that's crazy that says survivors, and it looks like Carl with the eye patch and the cap. I don't know what that is, and, um, and it's gonna be bi-weekly starting in October, like coming out every two weeks for this all-out war thing, and that's insane. I'm excited about that. That came out of the Image Expo, and uh, that's the week of comics that is. Lots of great stuff, whether you want indie stuff, whether you're excited about Trinity War, or whether uh, you're a huge uh, Hawkeye fan. So um, read up. Thanks, bye-bye. Thanks for watching, click subscribe, share it on Facebook, go to our Facebook, comment on it, and if you're local, every Tuesday is Geek Trivia, you could win your bar tab. Uh, Thursdays we have cool stuff, this Thursday is improv, next Thursday is open mic, the last Thursday is comedy night, and on the 27th we have Nerdy Show Live, which is a game show format where someone's gonna be slimed, it's gonna be like kind of like an old Nickelodeon thing with modern, uh, uh, geek stuff. It's just going to be insane. Uh, mark your calendar and come out. Nerdy Show Live. Thanks. Bye-bye.